what I might do is just step back a little and, and part of the blurb that came out with this is, is some of the work I'm doing is, is looking to um, restore the Modi to a, a waste site. And um, there's been some industrial waste placed on the site over the last uh, probably 50 or so years. And I met up with, with the trustees. So it's a group of Maori trustees own the land and, and an industry body has, has put some waste on there. And, and we became involved with them. We met them through some, through some chance happenings. And so we said, oh, this is just an absolute travesty. Um, how could this happen that what was once um, a lake where you used to gather um, tuna, we used to gather your eels, is, is now being filled in with this industrial waste. What were once um, springs, hot springs, um, that were used for, for curative properties and were used for therapeutic, um, for therapeutic means have now been filled in and are covered with waste. And, and what is effectively your land and, and the use of it is being dictated to you by this industry. And, and, and we were just completely taken aback with this. Um, and, and so we met with, with the trustees. They felt very disempowered. They felt like they had no voice um, where industry was just saying, this, we will do this, we will do this, we will do this. And we, and we had some meetings with them and they said, at the end of the day, we just want the Modi restored to this site. And I sat there for a second and, and the gravity of that sunk in and I, I got up and I said to them, you do realise that that, that, is, that, is, um, that is an amazing task um, and they hadn't, I must make it clear that they hadn't put it upon us to restore the Māori, they put restore the Modi. They put the, the onus on us to provide them with information and ways and pathways on which they could restore the Modi. But how would I reconcile um, parts per million iron or parts per billion arsenic or any amount of dioxin or PCPs or PCBs um, with, with Modi? And so then the scientific part will be, um, okay, iron does occur naturally in some waters. And you can have a certain amount of it without it, being, without it affecting your health. So it's about knowing the thresholds for those. And we took guidance from um, the Environmental Protection Agency. And I think New Zealand has some guidelines on amounts of metals and, and water. Um, dioxins are a different matter. Any amount of dioxin you have um, is, is, is toxic and you have to remove it. So I said, that is the scientific part. But to try and restore the Modi to it, it is more than that. For instance, because it is a geothermal area, um, there are naturally higher levels of some metals in the waters. Geothermal areas have naturally higher levels of iron and naturally higher levels of, of arsenic. So when we look at the waste, we need to say, okay, this is the natural background natural contamination of this particular site. So we need to take that into account when we come through with our, with our restoration program. Now to step into sort of the real guts of how we actually measure whether mo the Modi has been restored, I have to um, stay, say at the very outright that I am talking about the model, the Modi model that Dr. Kepa Morgan has come up with. In summary, his model, um, when, when people make decisions, there are biases involved and, and the decision making framework, the Modi model, the RMA as its basis. So the RMA says um, you, have to account, you have to account for environmental, economic, social and cultural factors in that. And if you went to a group of engineers and you said, if you had to, um, if you had to put your bias onto this, how much emphasis would you put on the environment? How much emphasis would you put on the economic? How much emphasis would you put on the spiritual? And how much emphasis would you put on the cultural? And they might, they would have various breakdowns. But I can guarantee you that if you took that to a group of Māori land trustees, their weightings would be different. And then the model um, picks up upon different effects upon the environment, different effects upon the economics, different effects to the social aspects and different effects to the cultural aspects and then you go through and the Modi model says that um, a zero says there is absolutely no effect, a positive one says that there is a slightly positive effect, a positive 
Two weighting suggests that the modi has been completely restored, and vice and, and, and the same for the negative. So negative one that says the modi is being compromised, and negative two says the modi is being completely lost from this. And then if you get to a matrix and you start working through the environmental, the cultural, the social, and the help me out here, environmental, social, cultural, economic, that big one, the dollars. Um, you go through that and the engineers will work down what the, they think their weightings are and then the Māori land trustees will work down what they think their scores for that are. And very interestingly, um, when this exercise was done with a group of wastewater engineers, they came up with um, a weighting that said that it was almost minus one, which meant that the wastewater engineers, based on current wastewater practices, which they thought were sustainable, I've been told to not compete with the trains, but that one snuck by rather swiftly. Um, so the wastewater engineers who had thought that their practices were, were sustainable, i.e. getting rid of our wastewater, treating it, and then either um, putting it up to the harbours or whatever sort of treatment systems they have, when they did this exercise, they came to the conclusion that their practices were, were not sustainable. And Kepper said at that point, that the engineers said, Kipper, you've, you've tricked us. What's going on here? And he said, let's step right back. And he went through the process again and demonstrated to them that it was their own weightings they had come up with and it was their own numbers they'd put into these, into these boxes, into this matrix, and yet it had come up with um, a number that suggested that it was not sustainable and therefore the Modi was being harmed. And so it is by this by this matrix, by this barometer, by this Modi model barometer, that we can assess whether the Modi is being restored, has been restored, or is being restored. Um, and that is, the, that is the approach that we will apply to this particular industrial waste site um, rehabilitation to determine whether the Modi has been restored or not. The trustees have said to us that um, the, the rehabilitation and the restoration of the Modi will take a long time. As long as our mokos, as long as our grandchildren are around to benefit from the work and the things we are doing now, then, then we can rest happy. So I think um, I didn't quite give the full picture of that. We are definitely thinking of, um, and we are thinking beyond that, we're thinking the grandchild of the grandchild. Um, so we're thinking of almost effectively into perpetuity. And so when we, when we apply the Modi model or the Modi barometer, um, sometimes we, we, we go back to 150 years ago and say, what was it like then? Um, what is it like now? And then let's project what might, what might it be like in 150 years' time. So effectively, we are trying to future-proof um, the things that we do and the actions that we take um, and, and the mahi we're doing and the work we're doing. And, and that leads me into perhaps... Um, a discussion around um, a concept in, in Māori of the three baskets of knowledge. Now there are many, um, there are many uh, interpretations or, or, or ways that these have been explained, but a really nice one that I heard ex had explained to me was one basket refers to old knowledge, knowledge that has been around for a very, very long time. Um, one basket pertains to new knowledge, knowledge that has just been discovered, that is new and has been applied. And then the third basket of knowledge is the no basket of knowledge that hasn't been found yet, that is still to be discovered. And I particularly like that, um, that analogy for the three baskets of knowledge because I really think that in, um, in the work that I'm undertaking now um, by trying to integrate empirical Western scientific thought with, with mātauranga Māori, I think we are really going to be creating knowledge and pulling it from that third basket and then hopefully placing it into that basket of, of, of new knowledge. And I, I, actually at this point I, I would also like to acknowledge um, the great support that I have had from Ngāpai o Te Maramatanga, which is a centre of research excellence um, based at the University of Auckland. Um, and I think, and I may be corrected if I get this wrong, that Ngāpai o Te Maramatanga um, interpreted it as sort of um, horizons of insight. 
where we're trying to broaden the horizons and integrate Māori knowledge with science. We're also trying to broaden Māori understanding and, and Māori research as well.